Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another Theme Park Obsession video. My name is Dylan and thank you so much for tuning back into the channel. Today we are exploring Disney Sea for the very first time. So how about you and I dive right in. Oh yeah, back at Tokyo Disney Resort. We just got off the train, monorail shot. Oh yeah, Tokyo Disney. Oh, that's a cool monorail. They got the Toy Story wrap on it. Okay, now we're taking the monorail over to Disney Sea because I don't know if you could walk over there. It's, it's a bit of a walk. It's literally on the other side of the island. And you have to pay for the monorail, so don't forget that. When you take the monorail there, it does cost money. All right, we made it on the monorail. Look at this. They're shaped like Mickey's. I think we're gonna find out how much the monorail is when we get to the next stop, because it doesn't tell you uh, your balance just yet because you're still en route. But look at this view. It's where we were yesterday, or yeah, in the last vlog. We made our first stop at the Disneyland Hotel. Look at how gorgeous that is. That is a very beautiful hotel. Look at the gardens down there. Well, hopefully next time we come here, we'll stay there. Well, my goal is to stay at all the hotels here on property, especially the new one that they're opening up. Oh, look, that's where they're building the new attraction, the new Space Mountain. Oh, look at this right here. These are all like the different samples of rock work and textures and stuff that they weather test. They let them sit out here for a while and just kind of see how it holds up. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay, we made it off the monorail. There's the Hotel Miracosta or Costa. I want to stay there one of these days too. But oh my God, I'm getting the chills. It's happening. Disney Sea. I've been wanting to go to this theme park for the longest time. Okay, as far as the cost of the monorail, it was like $1.60 something to go from that station where we got dropped off to Disney Sea Station. Ooh, look in the distance. There's Tower. I can't wait to ride that. Okay, we have chosen our line to wait in. Now this should be pretty efficient because at Disneyland side, we were able to get in the park relatively quickly. So I'm thinking the same thing over here on Disney Seaside. And what's great over here is they have the new security scanners. And if something goes wrong and you have to go through the old school ones, they have those too. So yeah, it's super efficient. You get through it really quick. Okay, we've made it in. We're officially in Tokyo Disney Sea. OMG, look at that. Okay, here we go. Touted as one of the greatest theme parks in the world. I can't believe I'm about to walk through this section of the park. I am like shaking and I might burst into tears. I mean, look at this, look at the details just already. And this is just the front entrance. Oh, MG, there it is. Holy guacamole, this is amazing. Wow, oh yeah, we got to stay in this hotel one of these days. Holy, you know what? Wow, this is absolutely stunning. Oh my god, this is insane. Oh, I'm like, I can't. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely crying. This is like way overwhelming. Holy, holy. It's like, you can't get a sense of it. Again, the scale. I've been saying that all throughout this trip. This place is massive. Oh, wow. Look at all this, too. This is, again, giving off a little bit of Animal Kingdom. It's like Animal Kingdom mixed with like uh, Islands of Adventure. Okay, collected myself. We're making our way to our first attraction. It seems like along with everybody else because we're hitting up Journey to the Center of the Earth. Obviously, we're gonna do a few laps around the park so I can show more of the details. We're just trying to get to this attraction. By the way, the line behind me over here, this is for Soren. It's very popular here. But, uh, there, I mean, it's uh, very overwhelming. There's like so many little details everywhere you turn. Okay, we've made our way inside Mysterious Island in this like volcanic structure. And this is the line, I believe, for journey to the center of the earth. It's posted 50 minutes already, which is not bad. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, there it is. I can't believe it. Look at the texture on the walls. It's like it's almost like that little cave section, like the bat cave in Indiana Jones. I mean, you could just sit in this section for a while and just enjoy the ambiance from here. I mean, it completely transports you to a different place in time, for sure. Okay, now we're walking into the main part of the queue. Journey to the center of the earth is a fast-paced adventure that includes sharp turns and sudden drops over rough and rugged terrain. Ooh, I'll take it. Look at the lava rock. It looks like it's still kind of like smoldering, you know? Like you could, if you were to like press down on it, it would it would cave in. We have some more bits of theming in this area. It looks like a laboratory, like a science lab or something. I love these original attractions. That's why I always advocate for them because I just think they're absolutely beautiful. Okay, here we go. We've made it to the lift. Only 33 minutes now. We're gonna take this to the center of the earth. Just like 
like that, we've made it to the center of the earth. This part of the uh, load and unload is insanely detailed as well. Okay, we survived our journey to the center of the earth. <laughs> that was incredible. That was so cool. That was, that was astonishing. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, there was a good jump scare in there. And the finale to that ride was just so much fun. Like you curve up into the top of the volcano and then you dive all the way back down towards the water over here. I, it was everything I had dreamed of it being and then some, it was so much fun. I think this is definitely like top five most beautiful quick service places I've ever seen ever. I mean, this, this might be like top two. Ooh, look, they're like steaming some buns or something and it smells so delicious in here. Food has been obtained. Michael's in there getting some water. Got the iced oolong tea, spring rolls, shrimp with some goody stuff, dessert, and this giant bowl of ramen. This all is like a special. The egg rolls were separate, but the special comes with these items and the drink. And you would not believe how much this is. This is $16 US. Incredible. Back home, this would be like at least a million dollars. Obviously, the economy is a lot different over here in Japan. Um, and our dollar is a little bit stronger, but man, I mean, everything is super affordable here. It's not expensive. Uh, we've been, you know, purchasing quite a few things and it really hasn't added to up that much. Okay, I'm gonna try the broth of the soup first. Ooh, that's good. That is really good. This ramen, by the way, excellent. The broth is like really rich and, oh, what's, go what's going on? Oh. Must have uh, been the bell to eat some more. All right, I'm diving into this, and this is just like a rice cake, so pretty standard. But the sauce, it's almost like a warm cocktail sauce, so it really pairs well with the shrimp. Mm. All right, so the flavor in here is more meat heavy than it is vegetable heavy. It's really, really good though. Absolutely demolishing this meal. This, again, the broth is just so good. I love that broth. Shrimp was great, spring rolls were great. But we have one more thing. That of course, oh, been a, been a little bit of, of a downfall there. Sorry there, spring roll or egg roll or dessert roll. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Some sort of dessert spring roll thing. But at the Mickey shaped, I think it's like a custard or something right there. I'm gonna find out how good this tastes. Is it good? good. It looks like it would be like a lavender flavor. Is it? Oh, dang, I got right. Or milk, could it's be like, wrong. It's like a lavender milk or something. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Alrighty, our bellies are full. That was scrum diddly umptious. And we're gonna continue our journey around Disney Sea. We're gonna head over to the next uh, land in the park. And that land that we're gonna be crossing over into is the Arabian coast. And we're also crossing through the like mermaid lagoon area. <laughs> and after, oh my goodness, look at that shot. Look at the fencing is made out of like pieces of coral. I love the coloring on it. It's like a pinkish salmon color and then it goes down to a Tiffany blue. Now the original plan was we were gonna go over to Tower after we ate, but it was so much food that we're like, eh, maybe it'll be best to do something a little bit slow moving. So that's why I think the Arabian coast would be the best bet to do Sinbad. That is a slow moving water ride. I've always wanted to do Sinbad. I mean, let alone all the attractions here at Disney Sea, but Sinbad looked like so much fun online and just so detailed. The fact that we're here and I finally get to do it, it's gonna be so much fun. Oh, wow. Look at that. And we're gonna make our way down the stairs here. Holy moly. Oh, there's a carousel in there. A double-decker carousel. Oh my God, I'm like tearing up again. This is amazing looking, holy I think the music is what really got me. That was like, when we walked on the stairs right there, holy moly. What do you think, Michael? This is really good. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the Japanese people understand how spoiled they are. Another verse, at least for us, another verse. I mean, wait, 
Who, who's a, oh, it's a boo from Aladdin. I don't think I've ever seen that character before. Oh, wow. And here we go. Sinbad storybook voyage. I just finished up with Sinbad. That was like a spiritual experience. There were so many things to look at. Everything was so vibrant and colorful. The music was beautiful. And that finale room was so grand with so many like, there, there's so many animatronics moving at once. It like overwhelms you and like, oh, I was, I started to cry. It was like, I had tears running down my cheek because it was just that intense at the end. What'd you think of uh, Sinbad? That was cool. It was really long too. It was very long. And it was cool. Every, yeah. almost every scene in there was so pretty. That was like, I mean, it was stunning. Every time you turned yeah. the corner, you were just in awe of every single room and it got like bigger and bigger every, and bigger. Like, every single room, I was like, oh, this has to be the finale because it's and, so grand. And yeah. It just kept going. And then the ending with the finale, yeah, I was, I was like, like, I was like tears oh, running down my cheek and everything and just the music and there's like, probably i don't know what 30 animatronics, animatronics in, there. in there were so good like and they're all they moving so well. very That's smooth the, yeah yeah and if you are here at disney sea do not skip yeah. on sinbad we're gonna go on it again later because that was incredible but next up we're gonna head over to the lost river delta land of the park we'll come back to the arabian coast a little bit later we're gonna ride a roller coaster. We're gonna another roller coaster credit. This will be roller coaster 189 for me. So I only need one more to get to 190. And then we're that much closer to 200. And right next to the magic carpet ride, it looks like this will be the new entrance to uh, the Fantasy Springs expansion. At least one of the entrances. Can't wait for that to open up. We are definitely coming back for this. And that roller coaster is Raging Spirits. Heck yeah. Now this is a copy of the one at Disneyland Paris, but I've heard this one's a little bit better just because it's more smooth. Oh, 360, that was a cool little effect. Things spun around for 360 degree loop, just kind of warning people this attraction does go upside down. Okay, already really impressed with the queue. This doesn't count, this doesn't, this is just temporary. But we've gone from the Arabian coast to the middle of the jungle. Look at this, like ancient ruins and everything. The waterfall in the center of this, like the whole waterfall structure is just gorgeous. I mean, look at that. There's so many little details in there and the water goes all the way down. It cascades like even further down. And the loop is right next to it. There's even like a fog effect going on. It's really well done. Oh, look at this, the rock is moving. It's probably those raging spirits. Almost on the attraction. But this is about as far as I'll be able to take you. I will not be able to record the attraction, so that's okay. Well, I will see all of you in just a jiffy.
fun. A lot smoother than uh, Paris, huh? Yeah, like a lot. Yeah, that was really good. That was 189. One more to go and I'm at 190. That was great. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I love that. I mean, the Paris one is overall pretty fun and it was like really intense, but this one just has a better profiling on it. I think it's just better profiled, a little bit smoother and the restraint system is really tight. So there's no like room for you to move around. Um, so overall, this one was a way better experience. And yeah, it was a good solid coaster. Look at this, look at the facade for this roller. Just again, it's a tiny little roller coaster. It's not big, it's super compact layout. They got a fog effect down here. This beautiful rock work with the flames. I believe there's flames up on the staircase too. You like my roller coaster sounds? Next up is Indiana Jones Adventure Temple of the Crystal Skull. Oh yeah, this is gonna be so much fun. And into the jungle we go. This one has a posted 55 minute wait. Oh yeah, I'm already loving this. And look at the facade on this. Just like the one back home, it's so detailed. It kind of gives off the vibes of the one back home, but this one I think is themed to um, like a South American theme. Okay, we've made it into the temple. And wow, look at this. Oh, I could, I wish like I can take all of you guys here because you have to see this in person. This is stunning. This is nothing short of jaw dropping. Wow. I mean, everywhere you turn, there's something. It's kind of hard to tell on camera, but there's actually water leaking from the snake's mouth down in uh, this section below where a bunch of bones are. I can't stop staring over here. Like, this is mesmerizing. And the detail just in the wall mural that stretches around the entire building. I mean, I can only imagine how long that took them to paint. I, I would assume this is all hand painted. I don't know if it's a sticker. It can't be. This is, this is probably hand painted. Yeah, <laughs> I thought ours was like really good, but this one is probably the best Indiana Jones queue so far that I've seen ever in my life. Okay, we've made it into the next room. Some sort of like, I don't even know what to call this, but there's like smoke coming out of it. Oop, we have the outpost here. We can study all of the findings in the temple. Alrighty, just like our Indiana Jones back home, <laughs> this one went down. So, uh, and they are evacuing the queue. So unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to ride right now. Okay, so unfortunately, Indiana Jones, like I was saying, went down. We're used to this though, with this, with this kind of attraction, just because back home, that ride goes down all the time too. So I was kind of waiting for it, because I knew it might've no, happened. I was but, not waiting for that. Oh, I, I knew like in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, I don't know, this one might go down. And sure enough, it did. Uh, but what's cool is they gave us uh, fast passes to ride any of the other attractions in the park, including Indiana Jones. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to Tower and do that one first uh, for our next like big e-ticket attraction. And then we'll probably come back to Indiana Jones later when it gets back up and use our fast pass. So that was really nice of them uh, to give us that because sometimes at Disneyland, when we get evac from the from the queue, they don't they don't give us the fast pass. Uh, oh my God, look at that facade for this. Yeah. As I'm like, it's funny, as I'm like explaining things, I'm like looking in different directions and like, boom, something gorgeous pops up out of nowhere. And this is the uh, entrance building to Indiana Jones. Look at that. So yeah, huge shout out to the uh, cast members uh, giving us the fast passes to come back a little bit later or use it on any other attraction in the park. That was really nice. Okay, we're gonna continue our journey this way to Port Discovery where Aquatopia is and I think a Finding Nemo attraction is over here. But we're gonna skip those two for right now. We'll come back to them a little bit later. We're on a mission to get to the Tower of Terror attraction. There's Aquatopia. This is actually a trackless ride. Isn't that neat? This area is really pretty. The water everywhere. And the ocean is just on the other side of this big wall. There's this massive line over here. I wonder what this is for. 
Ooh, this is very pretty. Oh, wow. That is so hilarious. Look at all the birds. It, it honestly kind of adds to the theme over here. That's like perfect. And just as a heads up, I want to try to film on as many things as I can. Again, I always want to be respectful to these parks. If they say there's no filming allowed or pictures or anything like that, you're not going to see it. So, uh, you know, I'm going to try my best to show as much as I can, but I hope all of you are enjoying the video thus far. Oh, look at this. They said, we're going to have a full-size boat over here. <laughs> like, we're not going to do a miniature one. We're just going to do the whole kit and caboodle. And there's Tower Off in the distance. Absolutely stunning. Wow, it's like almost like we've been transported back home to the United States. Just for a split second. Certain areas you look in. Oh, look, it's Minnie Mouse over there. It's time. Another attraction I've been wanting to experience for a very long time. Disney Sea's version of Tower of Terror. Okay, before we get into the ride details, Michael has a fun fact. Okay, so we're gonna fact check this too. But, do you see all the faces? Oh yeah, all the faces on the, okay. Do you know who that's modeled by? Uh, Tony Baxter. No, uh, <laughs> not Tony Baxter, Joe Rody. Yeah, Joe Rody. I was like, I had to look at the face again. I'm about to say Joe Rody because he's an explorer. Because Joe, Joe Rody also loves to uh, travel the world and explore and all that kind of fun stuff. Okay, so ride experience. I really enjoyed it. I would say that I like the Florida version of Tower of Terror just a little bit more as far as the drop sequence and all that kind of fun stuff. But this one's like story and vibe is probably the most superior out of all of them. And California Adventure had the worst Tower of Terror ever. <laughs> like California Adventure and I think Disneyland Paris definitely got the short end of the stick on the Tower of Terror game. So happy I was finally able to get on it. I mean, the, the building is beautiful. The interior show space is stunning. It's jaw dropping inside. And speaking of dropping, yeah, the drop sequence on this is pretty unique as well. And what's different about this one, particularly on the ride aspect, is that instead of a seatbelt that just goes over your lap, it's actually an over the shoulder, which is totally unique. I've never done that on a Tower of Terror before. Oh my goodness, look at this. Instead of Main Street vehicles, we got Tokyo Disney Sea vehicles. There's another one over here. That is awesome. I love this structure that's holding the, uh, the railway, the electric railway attraction. I love the theming right here. So we got the Mediterranean Harbor on this side. Then we have like the mysterious island on that side. But then you see the other side of the volcano, it kind of turns into something different because of the American waterfronts on the other end. So to make it look more natural, they had to like carve out different, uh, you know, shapes to, make, not, to not make it look like that. I think it's a really good detail. Ooh, look at this fortress exploration. Okay, we're gonna start over here and then I guess I work our way around this thing. Ooh, what's this? Can we control like the different boats? Oh, wow. Or do you have to pay for it? Oh yeah, it costs money. I was like, wait a minute. But that's pretty cool, look at that. This is probably the prettiest version of this I've ever seen, ever. Cause you know, they've have a few of these like scattered around theme parks, you know, around the world. But this one, this is, yeah, this is by far the best one I've seen. Okay, we're gonna go up these stairs and go somewhere because I have no idea where this leads us. Ooh, we're on the secondary level. Again, an awesome view of that. And a really good view looking towards the park entrance. 
Oh yeah, I could sit up here for hours and enjoy this. I love stuff like this because it just gives you the opportunity to just roam around and explore new places in the park. Well, it looks like we got some weaponry over here, just in case those competitors from those pesky other theme parks come over here. Should we, uh, should we fire a warning shot? Should we? Yeah, I think we should. Okay. Almost, almost. We just keep going higher and higher and higher. This is really cool. I think this might be the tippity top. How neat, what a, what a great like little trail built into this uh, architecture here. Shout out to the Mediterranean Harbor. We have this lovely courtyard down below. We'll check that out. I don't think I ever want to leave Tokyo Disney Sea. I mean, don't get me wrong, Disneyland is very fun and they have some beautiful parts of that park there, but this, this is like the best theme park I've ever been to. Like out of all the parks that I've been to, and I still have a lot of theme parks to go to in life, so far out of all the ones that I've been to, this one takes the crown. It's the best theme park that I've ever been to. And this is one of the many reasons why. And thankfully we have another day at this park. We have two days at Disney Sea and two days at Disneyland. Some people say, oh, you only need three days. I full on disagree with that. Do four days if you can. Like seriously, just save up and do four days. Do not do three days. That's not enough time. It's funny, this attraction is the longest wait in the park. Seems like the Japanese people love Soren. Which I mean, hey, I don't blame them. Soren's, Soren's a really cool attraction. I enjoy it as well back home. But I've never seen the line for Soren stay like this consistently. We've been keeping an eye on it for the past couple days and it's been the longest wait at Tokyo Disney Sea. So if you do want to enjoy Soren, I suggest doing that first, the very first thing you do in the park because all the other attractions, the lines, have, have kind of died down. It's not that bad today. We are here on a Monday and it's in the winter so you know times are gonna vary. But right now, yeah, everything else in the park is reasonable and this is the only one that is like pretty insane. So I would just do this one first if you were visiting the park and you want to do Soren. Going deeper into this land. And it's like, I feel like there's just, yeah, I mean, every corner you turn, there's just something new and you thought you saw it earlier, but you didn't. I mean, my goodness. Made my way to the corner of the Mediterranean Harbor near the front entrance of the park. And I gotta say, when you think of a theme park, this is the standard. Like, it's just, I, I, I teared up kind of walking it up in this area over here. Because, I mean, again, it's just incredible. This, I mean, I wouldn't even call this a theme park. It's a showcase of fine art. It's an art gallery. And it just so happens to have a few little rides. <laughs> That's what this is. Alrighty, next up for us, we're gonna head over to the Mermaid Lagoon. We're gonna check out those attractions. And then maybe check up on Indiana Jones again because it's been a while and hopefully it'll be back up. But wait, we're making a pit stop to Aquatopia. Oh yeah, we're gonna do this thing. Alrighty, and we're off, we're cruising. Yeah, this is a trackless system and we have no idea where we're gonna go, what we're gonna do. Oh, we're picking up speed. <laughs> this is so cool. Whee! This thing actually goes pretty quick. Oh, look at this, we're gonna go into, a, are we going in there? I think, oh no, we're spinning. <laughs> Look at that beautiful sunset. Oh, watch out, watch out. <laughs> what? <laughs> this, thing, this is so much fun. What a cute little ride. Look at that whirlpool. We're going to watch out for that. more spinning. <laughs> okay, there is one more coaster credit in this park and you know I'm doing it. It's this one right here. Heck yeah. This is a pretty good uh, kitty coaster they got over here. Oh, down the first drop at 90 miles an hour. Heck yeah, look at that. So yeah, see every coaster credit counts. And even though this is a kitty coaster, don't you worry. I can fit on this and we're gonna conquer this intense roller coaster. Look at that. High speed. Oh, did you see that like water effect? That was awesome. Okay, here we go. Recording is not allowed on this roller coaster, but that's okay. We'll see you in just a moment. All right, just 
got off. That was fun. That was a cute little roller coaster. What do you think of the most intense ride out there? It was cute. <laughs> that was, it was pretty cute. It was super smooth too. Really smooth, a nice little layout for the kids. I'm glad I got the credit. That was officially 190, so I'm only 10 away from 200. I think it's time for some popcorn. What is this? Ooh, matcha white chocolate popcorn? Oh, heck yeah. All right, it's time to dive right in to Mermaid Lagoon. Oh, wow. Oh, dang. Maybe a little hidden Mickey right there. Look at King Triton. Wow, this is gonna be epic, I already know it. And it feels great in here, it's, uh, it's nice and warm. Okay, Michael's gonna try the popcorn. Oh, so good. It smells great. Wait, look at this bubble wall. How is it? Already going in for seconds. Oh, so dang. <laughs> Mm. That's really good. I think this is my new favorite flavor, above the milk tea. Oh my word. This is a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Wow. I mean, just incredible. Wow, look at Jumping Jellyfish. It's got like UV on it, so it's kind of glowing. And this is where the quick service location is located, just on the other end. Like, again, I'm just in awe. Like, I'm, I've gotten emotional like 18 billion times today. I just can't handle it anymore. Like, my body is just gonna shut down. Sebastian's Calypso Kitchen. All right, we're gonna leave the ocean and get back to the surface because we're gonna hit up Indiana Jones. Now that it is back open, they're accepting the Priority Pass people, which we got earlier, which was very nice of them. So we're gonna use those and enjoy the attraction. Alrighty. Yeah, this is pretty interesting how they're only letting the priority pass people first, which I guess it makes sense because they handed out a bunch of them when the ride closed down. So they want to get through as many people as they can before they open up the regular uh, queue, which is this right here. Okay, now one interesting thing about the queue is the lighting has changed in here to a more dim, like moonlight. And then earlier it was like a golden color because it was, you know, it was still sunny out. So that's actually really neat how when it gets dark, they dim it up in here, and then when it's daylight, it's a little bit brighter in here. Wow, here we go. Oh, wow. Uh-oh, there's the crystal skull. Oh, no! Okay, it is time for dinner and Michael and I both got the salmon, the spicy sauce and the egg and then we also got chicken nuggets. Cause you know, yeah, they're Mickey shaped chicken nuggets. We had to try them. They were only 400 yen, so why not? And I mean, come on, look at that. Okay, we're making our way out of uh, our lovely dinner and Michael pointed this guy out earlier. Yeah, he must have had Chipotle. Made it back to Raging Spirits at night and look at the fire effect they got going on. Oh yeah, that is sick. Doing one more attraction before I call it for this vlog. It's 20,000 leagues under the sea. Oh yeah, I'm super excited for this one. And I love, uh, I love this, this, this pathway that we're walking down into the main part of the attraction. Alrighty, here we go. We got a little like handle too.
And with that, I think that's gonna wrap it up for day one at Tokyo Disney Sea, day two at Tokyo Disney Resort. What an amazing theme park. Beautiful, stunning, jaw-dropping, just a few words to describe this. I cannot wait to come back in the next couple days. Goodbye, Walt. You know, if you were here and you saw this, I'm sure you would be astonished just like we were, and you'd be very proud. Well, that's gonna do it for today's video from Tokyo Disney Sea. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and smash the thumbs up button. And if you're new to the channel and you love these videos from Disney or some of your other favorite theme parks, consider subscribing because I have brand new videos every single week that you won't wanna miss out on. Be sure to check out my Instagram account by following the link down below in the description. But until the next video, I hope you have a beautiful day, morning, evening, whatever it is. I'll see you next time in the parks. Bye.